In this video, we'll be going over two of the advanced features of SSH. One of those is opening windows, or in other words, graphical user interfaces, and the other one is how to transfer files back and forth between the cluster and your PC. To understand how opening windows on clusters works, first of all, you have to understand how windows are handled generally in Linux. The underlying component on this is called the X window system. The X server is a program that runs in every Linux system and it's an interface between the individual applications that open windows and the input and output devices that a user uses to interact with the windows. One key feature of X servers is that they can also display windows that are on different computers. So to connect to a cluster, we're using exactly that feature. We're connecting via SSH and then we open a window on the cluster that our local X server on our PC will display for us. Careful here, the terminology is the other way around from how it normally is. The server is on your PC and the client is on the cluster. To use the X window system with a Linux cluster, you need a couple things. First of all, you need an X server installed on your local PC and then you need an SSH connection where X support is enabled. Additionally, you also need a cluster that supports X windows. I've never seen a cluster that doesn't do that. So you can generally assume that your cluster supports that. X server software is available for all desktop operating systems. Linux, of course, has its own X server built in. For macOS, there's a software called X Quartz. For Windows, there are several options. There's one that's called X Ming and the software Mobile X Term which you've also heard me refer to earlier, comes with its own built-in X server. The second part is enabling the X support for the SSH connection, and you do that by specifying the minus X option. Carefully, it needs to be an uppercase X. Sometimes you see here that a Y is used instead of the X. In that case, it's called a trusted SSH connection, the difference is that for a trusted connection, some security features are disabled, so it's less safe. But occasionally, you will see people recommend using minus Y if something doesn't work properly with minus X. If you use an SSH config file, you can specify that for the corresponding preset with the forward X11 yes option, which is equivalent to minus X or if you need to forward X11 trusted, yes, is equivalent to minus Y. Here's how that looks in reality. I'm already connected to my cluster with a minus X connection. And if I now open a program that opens a window, I'm going to use a demo program that comes with X servers called XIS. It's used for testing the connections. You can see that there's now a window open. You can see that as far as macOS is concerned, this is the x -Quartz software. And macOS does not know where the window comes from, only that it runs inside x -Quartz. And you can also see that the window reacts to my mouse movements. In other words, I can interact with anything in this window. I can also move it around. Finally, if you need to move files back and forth between your PC and the cluster, there's the SCP command for that. The S is for secure because it uses SSH and CP for copy. It works kind of similar to the default Linux CP command that copies files. Since SCP uses SSH, you can use the same settings and command line options and you can also use the presets that you specified in your SSH config file. The SCP command is the most basic and most simple utility to copy files back and forth. There are others which might, may or may not use SCP. For example, on Windows, there's WinSCP, which is a graphical front-end client. There's SSHFS, which allows you to connect various uh, front-ends, for example, the macOS Finder to a cluster. And Mobile Xterm, which I've mentioned several times already, can also copy files back and forth. 
The syntax for the SCP command is generally this. You have your SCP command, then you have any options if you need them, and then comes a source and a target. For the source, you first specify the source host, in other words, the computer it's on, and the source file, in other words, the path on the computer. These two are separated by a colon. And for the target file, same thing. If one of these is your local computer, you can leave out the host and the colon. You can simply specify the file name. For the hosts, you can also use presets from your SSH config file. That syntax is the same whether you're copying to the cluster, from the cluster, or between two remote machines. Just like the cp command, which we've already seen, if you copy an entire directory, you have to specify the minus "-r", option. One minor difference to the cp command, the scp command will print out each file as it's being transferred, so you can watch the progress. I should mention that even in the console, scp is not the only possibility you have. There's also, for example, the rsync utility, which is a commonly used tool. As a quick demo, I'll copy the demo file 1.sh, which we've already seen from the cluster to my local MacBook. I'm on my MacBook right now, and for the source, I specify my SSH preset for the cluster, then the path, which is my home directory, And as a target, I specify a file on my MacBook. If I press enter now, for each file, in this case only one, it will print the progress. In this case, it was so quickly that it immediately showed 100%. And we can see the file was transferred and it was renamed in the process.